So, that's that. We're getting a little bit cooler stuff going on with that terrain now. But, like I said at the end of the, um, towards the end of the last episode, it's still just one giant block. Um, we should definitely split this into chunks. What do you think? Um, it might be a smart idea. So, how do we do that now? Um, obviously, there's a couple of ways. The method I'm going to do is the best method, because it's my method. Um, and in generation settings, we want to create a new public int. And this is going to be chunk size. And let's give this 16. Uh, because, obviously, that's how big a chunk it is. Um, and then... The first thing we want to do is when we generate terrain, we're going to generate the sprites, um, right? What if we don't generate sprites? What if we generate chunks instead, and then we put the sprites into those chunks, and the chunks generate their own sprites? Make sense? Probably not, but you guys will see what I mean. The first thing, the first thing we should do is public uh, void create chunks right so let's comment this bit out for now and we're going to say generate up oh, create chunks I forgot what I called it already um, all right so uh, the number of chunks we generate is dependent on the world size and the chunk size. So the number of chunks is the world size divided by chunk size. So let's just say int num chunks equals world size divided by chunk size. Right? And then we'll say for int i equals zero, i less than num chunks, uh, i plus plus. Cool, and then now we're going to generate a chunk. So our chunk is going to be a new game object. So game object, new chunk equals new game object, and the name is going to be i. Essentially, name equals i dot two string. Um, the reason I do that is because that way um, the chunk's name is going to be either zero, one, two, or three. So it's numbered, not just called new chunk. Um, it will make us easy. It will make it easier for us to identify which chunk is which. Now, I think that's the only thing we actually need on a chunk. Uh, we shouldn't modify the positions because if we modify the positions, it's going to take some math to find out where we're putting um, each uh, tile. But if I play this now, here we go. Okay, so first, this name got changed to five, oddly enough. Don't know how that happened. But we are getting five chunks here. Right, so the other thing we actually had to do, I forgot, new chunk dot transform dot parent equals this dot transform. Um, that way our chunks are underneath our terrain object in the hierarchy. So it still changes their name to 5, but um, yep, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's figure out what's going on here. Game object new chunk equals new game object, name equals i dot to string. Uh, let's say new chunk new game object, here we go. Let's not give it a name. Let's see what goes on. Okay, new game object, perfect. Uh, what if I say new chunk dot name equals i dot to string if i put it here it shouldn't matter but we'll see what happens okay so for some reason that works um as long as it's not in the same line but uh yeah so now we're getting our chunks perfect but where's that terrain gone um let's bring that back so we're gonna create chunks but the tiles parent so at the moment we're setting the parent of the child to here we go this line it's just this transform we want the parent to be um 
the chunk it's within. So the way we're going to do that, we're going to say right here, we should probably have an array of all our chunks. It might make life a little bit easier. But the way I'm going to do it actually is this. I want each chunk to generate its own um, set of tiles. Split it up a little bit. It will increase the generation performance, um, at least a fraction. So at the end here, uh, we probably shouldn't put that there. We should probably make do that math automatically calculate um, which chunk it fits. Um, in which case, then you know what? We should probably do an array. Um, okay. So that should go. That will go above here. So private uh, game object array. Yeah, yeah. Um, chunks. Uh, we'll say world chunks. Uh, equals, uh, we'll just do that for now. And then here, num chunks equals that. We're going to say world chunks equals new game object array with the size of num chunks. Um, and then we want to say world chunks i equals new chunk. So, yes, that should be fine. Uh, we can test it if you want to make this public. I'm all for testing. That's why I'm saying we should test everything. Um, because you don't really want to move on to the next step if the previous step hasn't worked. Um, so anytime you implement something, just make sure it works. Is my biggest tip. Um, one, two, three, four, five. One, yep. Okay, perfect. That works. Um, now generate terrain. This is where we're going to make some decisions. Uh, sorry, no. Uh, where is it? Down here. This is where we're going to make some decisions. We're going to decide where our chunk's parent should be. That's going to be dependent on um, a new int, which is going to be chunk chord. Didn't it? Uh, it's short for, but I'm going to keep it as chord. Um, equals we're going to round x to the nearest chunk size. That's the one we want. And back here. Boom. So current pos x is going to be x divided by grid scale, which is going to be chunk size, times grid scale, which is also chunk size. There you go. But that's an integer. Math.round two int. Cool. Cool. So that's going to give us um, that. But we want to say new tiles are transformed to parent. We want to then do chunk chord divide by equals chunk size. Um, and then transform the parent equals world chunks um, Sorry chunk chord divide by equals chunk size of world, ch uh, world chunks chunk chord Is that gonna work ah dot transform Now that may or may not work. I don't know how good my math is uh, nothing happens because it's not generating. Now, let's give it a go. I have a feeling it's not going to work. Oh, maybe it is going to work. Um, how do I? Ah! Two. Okay. Two. Three. Four, five. So it looks like it worked. It is split into chunks. Oddly enough, <laughs> the chunks are different sizes. <laughs> hmm. 
Okay, let's do chunk size. Maybe it could because uh, could be because the world size and chunk size are aren't easily divisible. So I might make this ten. You know, what? let's do twenty. There should be five chunks. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, zero, one. Okay, something's going on here. Three, four, five. Um, it's not too big of an issue. Technically, it's working. It is splitting our terrain up. Um, but I'm just confused as to what exactly is going on. Ah, hold up. We're getting an error. Index was out of bounds. Okay. So if we fix this error, that might fix our issue. So that's going to round to, let's say round. Let's say float. And then we'll just int it here. Still out of bounds and probably still uneven, yes. Uh, interesting. Float chunk coordinate equals method thought round x divided by chunk size times chunk size. And I'm dividing it. What if I don't divide it? Maybe me dividing is giving it a uh, problem. Ah, uh, but then it's all out of bounds. Um, Yes, it would be. Two, three, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay. So round two int, um, and then chunk coordinate. Put this in brackets. Divide this by chunk size. Uh, chunk size. Right. Um, let's think about this. X divided by chunk size. So if it's at the position of, let's say, 5, divided by 20, times it again by that. Then. That's a bit... Sounds incorrect in my head. But Google told me it's correct. So... This 154. Okay, yes, still that one. And these are still uneven. Yes, evidently. Are these sizes correct here? One, two, three, four. Yeah, they are because I can. Oh no. This is one block too many. That's one block, not enough. This is one block too many. Um, that is one block not enough. And then this is just too small. This is half. One block more than half, apparently. Uh, okay. What I could actually do is convert this to a list of vector twos. Ah, uh, no. A list of... Uh, wait, what am I doing? A list of ints. A list of type int world chunks. That's not right, no. 
yeah, this has to be game object array. Otherwise, how else are we gonna add it? All right, give me two seconds, guys. I'll work this one out as well. Okay, guys, I seem to have worked out the issue. Um, what I did, I did a bunch of debugging. Change generate tree. In the generate tree function, you want to change the float x and float y to int x, int y. Same here, you want to change this. This used to be float x um, and float y. Make that int x and int y. Um, so I'll run this code and you'll see what, ha what happens. Basically, we're rounding it to its nearest 20. So um, that's perfect. We're snapping it to a virtual grid. And then to determine which cell it is in that grid, we're dividing it by the chunk size. So for example, if it's in cell, uh, if its position rounded is 20, then it's in cell number one because 20 divided by 20 is one. Um, so if I, I'm debugging and logging this and these are the outputs I got. Um, so now we just have to pass in these outputs into here. So I'm just gonna say this, that, um, and I have to turn this into an integer. Basically, the issue is with the conversion from uh, float to int. In the binary math, there's a bunch of issues. If I run this now, you'll find that it works fundamentally perfectly. There we go. So it was a bit of a chore. I won't lie, guys. Took a bit of research and um, overall took a bunch of time. Thanks for sticking by, though. Um, we got there in the end. But, um, yeah, I'm thinking, should I call it a day on this stage of the tutorial before we move any further? Um, it might be a good time to end it here. I don't know, you guys let me know what you want to see in the next tutorial. I was thinking about adding maybe some more um, things to the terrain, maybe some ores. Uh, the other thing we could do is maybe start turning these into some scriptable object classes. So we don't just have a bunch of sprites here. We'll have um, actual objects with um, qualities, for example, their durability, uh, resistance, all that sort of stuff. Um, the tool needed to mine them. Uh, apart from that, that's pretty much our um, terrain generation done, though. We can start adding, if you guys would like to see, we can start adding these sort of add-ons to the terrain. Um, the other thing we can start doing as well is biomes. Uh, that might be a pretty fun thing to work on. Um, just to end it off, I'm going to stress test this. So let's make this maybe 400. And let's see how quickly or slowly our terrain generates 400 size world. And honestly, pretty well, 19 chunks. Um, once we have a player controller going, I'm going to start working on loading and unloading these chunks. Um, that way we're only generating chunks which are on screen. But um, that's when we get to the player controller, so look forward to that bit, guys. I don't know, maybe I should add um, ores and stuff next episode. I might do that. Either way, thanks for sticking around, guys. Um, I'll catch you in the next one.